We have established in the previous videos the validity of the quantization of angular momentum in solar systems. Angular momentum is quantized for the solar system and is given by the square root of n alpha times g over 2 pi. We have demonstrated that this formula is a good tool for analyzing all celestial systems in the universe since the formula can estimate very accurately the radii and momenta of the planets without further information about them such as mass, velocity, period, and so on. All that is required is a constant n, which is the quantum number. But which quantum number is it? Because it is neither the principal nor the azimuthal nor the magnetic quantum number. I have named it the orbital quantum number. This analysis for solar systems and other celestial systems is the same as that for atoms, in which case the quantization equation for momentum is n h on 2 pi according to the Bohr model. I argue that this momentum equation is the only equation for momentum and that the other forms of this equation that we have seen in atomic physics, such as the Bohr formula, the momentum equation with the momentum quantum number, and so on, can all be derived from this one, as well as their corresponding quantum numbers. This means that n alone is sufficient to completely specify the state of an electron or planet. Let's see how it is done. From our momentum equation, you should be able to agree with me by now that alpha is equivalent to z and g is equivalent to h. And so we can use them interchangeably, which means that the equation remains the same for both atoms and solar systems. But we use either of those symbols based on the type of system we are dealing with. The following formalism is for both cases. So, do not get worried if I use G where I'm supposed to use H, because it represents the same idea. N runs from 1 to infinity. If we let N to be equal to eta squared, where eta is a positive integer, like N, the momentum equation becomes eta H on 2 pi, eta equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. We have let alpha to be equal to 1, just to keep things simple. I have interchanged g with h so that you should be able to recognize that this is the Bohr equation. And by direct extrapolation, eta is the principal quantum number. Every value of eta corresponds to some value of n according to their relationship. So, the corresponding n values for these three values of eta, represented n subscript eta, are as follows. That is, when eta is 1, n is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. When eta is 2, n is equal to 2 squared, which is 4, and so on. So you can see that every value of momentum you can calculate using the Bohr equation can also be gotten using the above Green equation, making the Bohr equation a subset of the Green equation. It is now clear that there are missing orbits corresponding to orbital quantum numbers 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. If we let n to be equal to L in bracket L plus 1, and sub it into our momentum equation, it becomes the square root of L times L plus 1 times G over 2 pi. L is an integer just like N and eta. From our understanding in atomic physics, it is easy to see that L is the momentum quantum number. Every value of little l also corresponds to a particular value of n according to the relationship. So, the corresponding values of n 
denoted n subscript l is given as shown. Notice that these values are different from the n eaters, but they are both values of n. A combination of these two sets produces a sequence for n, missing the numbers 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, and so on. Let these missing numbers represent a new set nm, like so, so that the set n is completed by a union of all three sets, like so. m is the magnetic quantum number, and it is just the value of n that are not covered by the principal and momentum quantum numbers. So its momentum equation is given by the following blue expression. N can therefore be written as follows. The dots represent the NMs. The numbers are in the order N eta, NM, then NL, after which it starts again from N eta and repeat. That is, the values of N are in an oscillation between these three. Let's make a little remark on the NMs. For any given n eta, there exists an equal number of nm's to its left and to its right. For example, around 1, which is an n eta, there exists no nm on its right nor to its left. The next n eta is 4. There exists 1 nm on the right and 1 on the left. 2 nm's to the right and left of 9. 3 to the right and left of 16, and so on. So, the constraint to the nm's is given by the following inequality. Let L minus be this, and L plus be this. They are the values of the nl's that bound the chosen n eta. For example, let's choose an arbitrary n eta, say 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So L plus is 25 plus 5, which is equal to 30. And L minus is 25 minus 5, which is equal to 20. This means Nm will take values between 20 and 30. And there are a square root of 25 minus 1 of them to the right and to the left of 25. That is 5 minus 1 which is equal to 4. So we have 4 nm's to the right and to the left of 25. You can do this for any n eta in the sequence. Therefore, the rule for assigning electronic configuration, which is the same as the rule for reading the above sequence for n, is as follows. That is, for any arbitrarily chosen n eta, the corresponding nl is L minus, and the Nm's are the values between L minus and L plus. In terms of the quantum numbers eta, L, and M, the rule is as follows. For any value of the principal quantum number eta, the momentum quantum number is eta minus 1, and the magnetic quantum number M lies between negative and positive L. I am sure you recognize this version. It is the same rule for assigning quantum numbers in atomic physics and chemistry. Example Let's take for example n eta equal to 16, which corresponds to eta equal to 4. n l is equal to 12, which corresponds to l equal to 3. That is eta minus 1 and nm is equal to 13, 14, 15, dash, 17, 18, 19, which corresponds to m equal to minus 3, minus 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. That is, m lies between minus l and plus l. Let's make some remarks on the subshell theory in atomic physics the SPD notation ideas. 
Let's take a look at the table below. N, L, and M represent the principal momentum and magnetic quantum numbers, respectively. The values of N represent the main shell, while those of L represent the subshell. N equal to 1 represents the K shell, N equal to 2 represents the L shell, N equal to 3 represents the M shell, and it continues like that alphabetically. For N equal to 1, L is equal to 0, and M is equal to 0. When N is equal to 2, there are two possibilities. That is, N can be 2, and L and M are 0, or N is equal to 2, and L is 1, so that M is minus 1, 0, and 1. For N equal to 3, L can be 0, 1, or 2, as shown below. So there are also three possibilities for M, as shown. The L's tell us which subshell we are in. L equal to 0 is the S subshell. L equal to 1 is the P subshell. L equal to 2 is the D subshell. L equal to 3 is the F subshell, and we can continue from this point in an alphabetical order. So, for the first row, we have the 1S subshell, the next row is the 2S subshell, the next is the 2P, 3S, 3D, and so on. Let's now fill in this table using my version of the rule. The quantum numbers are eta, L, and M. Remember that these quantum numbers are related to the orbital quantum number as shown. Depending on which quantum number is used to derive n, we are going to place that value of n under that column. So, for eta equal to 1, n is equal to 1, and we place that under the eta column. So, l has to be 1 minus 1, which is 0. So, putting l equal to 0, in the equation below produces n equal to 1. This orbit has already been occupied. So we have a dash under L and consequently a dash under M. Next, for eta equal to 2, n is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. Then L can be 1 but not 0 because 0 produces an orbit that has already been occupied. So putting 1 in the equation below gives 1 times 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we'll place n equal to 2 under the L column. For this value of L, m is equal to minus 1, 0, and 1, which corresponds to n equal to 3, dash, and 5. The dash is used because m cannot be 0. For eta equal to 3, we have 9 under eta, 6 under L, and so on. These two tables are identical, but for the fact that I choose to not repeat numbers. If I did, then the tables will become exactly the same. We have seen that every n specifies a different orbit which has its own value of momentum, and therefore different energy. But in quantum mechanics, we hear things like many electrons occupying the same shell and having the same energy. This is the kind of weirdness that quantum mechanics presents, which makes no physical sense. Since my model can reproduce all these quantum numbers and even the same idea of electronic configuration, which are derived in quantum mechanics from the so-called Schrodinger equation, and my model does this in a more sensible way, it in itself suggests that the planetary model should be adopted for atoms, and the momentum equation be as I have demonstrated. Modeling the electron as a planet works very well, so I don't see why we have to abandon it and accept the idea of it being some spooky thing. In the next video, we shall be looking at the derivation of the quantization equation for energy. So stay tuned, stay connected by hitting the subscribe button.
see you next time